believe. Now, last week it took us two goals to get at one part. I did on, uh, I, we were doing about the battles, eight battles that you must win. I wish somebody had taught me this at the very beginning of my Christian walk. I really, really wish. If they had taught me this stuff back then, I wouldn't have had to go through half the stuff I went through, but I didn't know. There's eight battles, and the sooner you learn to fight them, the sooner you learn to hit them on the head and get to victory. It doesn't mean that it's over, but it means once you get the victory the first time, it's not as bad the second time you can handle life. And there's been eight battles that we've been dealing with from the Sunday mornings and Sunday nights, and, and uh, we're now up till this this morning as we part six. Last week we did it in two sessions, which was the battle for faith. You've got to see, nobody told me this stuff way back then, but you've got to have faith. You've got to learn how to operate in faith, and it took two sessions to do that. I really can take another couple of sessions, but I'm trying not to get over on until uh, one particular round. I'm trying to stay with the battles we have to fight. So what, that was up to part five. Uh, uh, we have burnt some of them. They're at the back of the room. If you've missed out on any of those uh, uh, any of those series we've done, you need to get up on it. You need to stay on par. You, it's not just one of them. Faith is not all there is. You've got to have faith, but you've got to, you've got to have the rest of those as well. This morning, we're going, to, we're going to deal with one this morning. Hopefully, we'll finish it this morning, and then we're going to do another one that night, two different ones. We're going to do this morning about your finances. I, I know we've talked about finances before, but I'm going to share stuff on this one that I haven't shared with you. This is about a battle for finances. See, nobody told me this at the start. They told you there's an offering basket, flick your coin in there on the way through. A little later, they told me on to tithe, didn't tell me why, didn't tell me the ins and outs of it, and so you kind of scraped your way through it and it took a long time before somebody got through to me and said here is the way that it's done when we started to do that life never looked I wish they'd have taught me that at the beginning I wish that somebody had showed me that but I had ever from we learned it we went after it and uh, God has surely taken care of us he's met all our needs according to his riches and glory we're going to talk about your battle for finances this morning tonight we're going to deal with your battle for health You've got to learn it. You've got to learn how to deal with you. It's, you've got to stay alive. Look at somebody, stay alive, stay alive. Just look at them and say, you've got to stay alive, stay alive. Now, I know you can't live forever. I know you can't live forever. And, and, and that, the, the date, the time of that is in the hands of the Lord. I understand that. And you will not be able to alter that or shake that in any one way unless you've got some special sitting with the Lord and he adds 15 years to you. Something fine. Mostly that doesn't happen. You do have a sell by date. Look at somebody say, but you're looking good. You're looking good. There is a sell by date stamped on you somewhere. And one day it will be over. But until then, I, I want to stay healthy. Do you? So we're going to show you the basics of that tonight, the stuff you need to know. Uh, but this morning one is about your finances. Now you say, I know all about that. If you knew all about that, you wouldn't be in the predicament nor the situation that you're in today, okay? I'm about to revolutionize your life on this teaching this morning. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6, it says, He that soweth sparingly, let me read this slowly, He that soweth sparingly, Look at somebody say, that means given very little. Now, Mr. Cheapo is not here this morning, so we'll move on without him. He that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. You understand, if you're only going to give in small measures, that's all you're ever going to give back. Uh, it still works, it still increases, but it's not the same as getting back big time. And he said that he that soweth bountifully, bountifully, he shall also reap bountifully. Every man according as he has purposed in his heart. Everybody shout purposed in his heart. Every man or every woman, that's mankind, that word is mankind. Mankind given according as he has purposed in his heart and so let him give not grudgingly, not of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver. Not a fearful giver, but a cheerful giver. And he give a little detail in there. He says, let every man give with, uh, with purpose in his heart. As he purposes in his heart, according as he has purposed in his heart. Most people don't give out a purpose in the heart. They haven't purposed anything. You just say, oh, here's a basket. We're going to get a few coins out. And they toss it in. That's spontaneous giving. Most people, all they ever do is spontaneous giving. But that's not where the big nuggets are. The big nuggets are when you have purposeful giving. When you make up your mind, I'm going to bless him, her, it, and she. And most of the purposeful blessing I've ever done was 
was outside of my bank book, outside of my pocket. I didn't have enough to do it. But I said, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to do it. It may take me six months. It may be two years. But I'm putting some stuff aside because I got somebody in my heart. I got a ministry. I got someone. And I'm going to bless the socks off that as soon as I can get to that amount of money. You'll never do that on spontaneous giving. But when you begin to direct your giving, let me tell you what happens. God gets right side your purpose and money that you never had starts to come in because God knows you're not going to spend it now. You're going to put it over to here to the purpose because usually your dream is really God's dream. Are you with me this morning? And if I could ever get you over on the purposeful giving, sometimes we do it when we say, okay, we're going, we need some new equipment and we give you a purpose and you come back the next week with giving. But you have now moved into a new level. That's purposeful giving. But you don't have to wait until there's a need in church. Please don't ever think that giving has only got to do with Sunday morning and Sunday night in church. It's not. It's in every arena of your life. And let the Spirit of God lead you. Let Him give purposely. The word purposely means with foresight, with forethought, with purpose and intention. So uh, that's a different subject, but keep that in mind. We'll maybe get back to it. Uh, in the previous generations, like the post-war generation, the, the war that, the, the generation that was kind of lived through the war time, maybe just come out of the war time, some of them people's still alive, but anyway, they, they, they don't think like this generation thinks. Because they lived in a time of need when the land, would be, you had to get coupons and you had to line up for food and do all that type of thing. Food and money was very, very scarce and so was jobs. So if you got any work at all, you were very thoughtful about your money. You didn't just throw it here and throw it everywhere. So, so people would open their houses to give other people, share their porridge and share their food. You've all heard stories about that. But you didn't have a lot of money, nor did they give much money. Because they thought, well, if we give, we'll have nothing left for themselves. It was a post-war generation thinking. They taught the same to their children. Now, most of that generation, an older generation, are alive. But they are, they're very thriftful with their finances. They'll just not give anywhere and give anywhere. They're thoughtful because they saw the struggle of their forefathers coming through with money. So they just don't throw it about them. Now, this generation that's rising up, they don't think about money at all. This is the credit card society. This is debt. Buy now, pay later. Look at somebody say, I like the sound of that. <laughs> buy now, pay. This generation knows nothing about saving in the bank, knows nothing about that. It's buy now. It's whatever the eye feasts on. All the advertisement companies know for that. So if, you go, if you're an older person, you go into Marks and Spencers, you go into the, to the stylish. They don't cater for the older people. This, they got new styles all the time because they know you're not parting with your money. <laughs> The older people's not parting with their money, but the young ones get the plastic out. Hey, I'll have one of them. Right? Oh, we can buy two of them, not pay the next January. Like January's never going to come. Of course it comes. But it's a buy now, pay later society, and it's not a good one. It's caused debt, debt, debt. You need to break the thought and break the bond of debt immediately out of your heart. It's not a God thing at all. It's a Get quick rich society where people will take shortcuts and there is no shortcuts. It's the road to disaster. Let me tell you something. It's this, but where I want it and I want it now. It'll cause people to steal. It'll cause greed to multiply and increase on every side. And then when the January comes and by now, pay later, comes the financial struggles. And because there's struggle with a want, gotta have now, there's no money set aside for the house of God, nor the God things that God wants to do with your finances, so suddenly your money's not working, and you're in a downward spiral, and you're stuck, and you can't get out of it. Sadly, the church, most of the church, because it's young people, they're in the same bind. Somebody needs to sit and tell them that's not the scriptural way to do it. You can prosper, you can be in health, even as your soul prospers, because God takes delight in the prosperity of his servants, but you can't get the delight out of it doing it the world's way. You've got to do it God's way. In fact, God's way is entirely opposite. Listen to this and listen to it good. Proverbs 11 and verse 25 says, the liberal soul, the liberal soul shall be made fat and he that waters 
shall also be watered himself. Did you get that? The liberal soul, the generous individual, the person who's looking after somebody else before themselves, the person who'll do without that you can have, that liberal soul who's quick to put their hand in his head here. When somebody says, "Come, I'm in desperate, here, let me help you. Never even put into the fear of it in front of them. They just say, let me help you. The liberal soul, a man who's liberated from finances and realized finances is a tool to be a blessing to somebody else, that man will be become prosperous in the things of God. He'll go to bed happy at night because he's not craving after money, but money has become a tool in his hands. And the more he uses the tools of finances, the more God can trust him and the more God will bless him. And he that waters, the Bible says he shall be watered himself. As in what the Bible says before, what we quote here regularly, I just use the one scripture to get it in your thinking. Give. Everybody shout give. Luke 6 and 38, give then, and it shall be given back unto you. Good measure. When God gives you, he doesn't give you the same measure back. He gives you a good measure back. And he describes it, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. In other words, he gives this description, a basket of seed. You pour the seed in. When it starts to pour, if you can imagine, I wish I had a demonstration, but you pour it in till it heaps up like this. You know what, you ever get this in your mind? You get beans or, or whatever, you pour it in, and it heaps up on a plate like that. Well, what you can do if you're trying to get more in it to get a good measure, as you push it down. I said, you push it down and every side so now you can heap it up again. You get a bit more in. Press down, shaking together. So what you do now because it's beans is you shake the basket and all the little uh, spaces begin to fill up so it's pressed down, shaking together so you can pour more on. When it pours on, it's now overflowing. That's the way God wants to give it. You give him the first lot. He pressed down, shook it together and applied more so it's running over. It's a multiplication system. You, well, no matter what you give, it's coming back to you, increased with good measure. And the Bible adds this on, with the same measure that you give it out, it will be given with the same measure back onto you. Now, we're not talking quality, quantity here. We're talking quality. In other words, if I just had a spoonful of beans, God's going to use the same measure that I used to bring it back to me. He's going to give it pressed down, shaken together, but he can only give you a spoonful back, pressed down, shaken together, run over. But if I was to bring a shovel, <laughs> you know what them snow shovels with a big mouth and a big mouth shovel? If I was to dig that into the beans and say, let me help you, God says, give me that out of your hand, son, because I'm going to bring it back to you with the same measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. You can come up to another level any time you want by adjusting your giving. Look at somebody say, this is exciting. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw one liner type of things in here for to help you that I don't want you to forget. And whoever's in charge of the Facebook, please write these down. But money is a too. Listen, and it can buy you everything but happiness. You got that? Money can buy you everything but happiness. It can pay your fare to everywhere but heaven. Did you get that one? Write that one down. Okay. Believers have two things about their life. As one that we are forgivers. Look at somebody say, I forgive you. Believers are forgivers, and as well as that, believers should be givers. We need to be givers. Somebody should have taught to this in the first class when you got born again is first thing, become a giver. Start in fact. What you're trying to do is break the greed from off your life. And understanding about giving. Giving is not just a blessing. It's not just a blessing. It's where you will learn to trust God. I'm telling you, when you start to give, you hear God talking to you about, I want you to give this and give it. You'll have to trust God to do it. You'll have to trust God when, when you've got the last and he says, give it to me. Or you've got a portion just enough to do it. And God says, give me a part of that. You're going to trust God. So it's not just given to be a blessing. It's where you're learning to trust God. And it's where you're learning to trust God on your daily needs. Now God, you can trust God daily because on a daily basis, you're looking for somebody to bless. God will get it back to you. And the more you give, the more avenues is coming back in. And you're not just trusting God with your daily needs, you're trusting God with your future blessings. 
Because there's places to go and there's people you're going to see and there's things you're going to need and God's looking your deposit right now for the future that's coming up. So we're not just blessing and so on. We're making deposits in a heavenly bank account for, our, for, for a, a later day. The Bible says this, we're actually investing into our future. The Bible says in Mark chapter 10 and 21, Then Jesus, beholding, beholding uh, this man, he loved him and he said unto him, One thing you lack. You know what you're doing? Everything just fine. But there's one thing you like. Now, could you believe Jesus said this to the rich man? He says, go and sell whatever you have. Go and sell it. Go and sell whatever you have and give to the poor. He said, now you're doing well on all avenues. You're lacking in this area. He said, I want you to sell some of that stuff off now. The money you get, don't, don't put it back in the bank. He said, I want you to be a, a servant to me. And I want you to go bless him, 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 and her. Well, why did God need to do it? Because this guy's out of line somewhere. He's out of sync. And in one quick operation, God can put him back on track. God, I've already told you, God's going to increase it back to him. He just wants you to understand that the government, whoever, is not your financial support. God says, Try, watch this. Get, sell that off. Give it to the poor on my behalf. I will give it back onto you. Press down, checking to get it running over. But this time you'll know your Aunt Sally didn't organize it, but I organized it because he's done it with purpose. Are you with me this morning? He said, one thing you like, go and sell what you have and give to the poor and you shall have treasure in heaven. Treasure in heaven. We are doing stuff right now that's going into our heavenly bank accounts. Now, I know, I know there's a heavenly bank accounts open now when we need to do things, but I also think there's a heavenly bank account for us when we get there. There'll be credit unto us when we get to that side as well when it's over. Luke chapter 12 and verse 34 says, Where your treasure is, where your treasure is, that's your money. Where your money is, there will your heart be also. So you have to start and bless and start give and become a blessing. Your heart will change one of these days over to be a blessing where money will not have you, but you'll have money to in order to do the kingdom of work. There's actually a duty. We're supposed to be givers as a duty. There's a discipline in our duty because the Bible doesn't call us sons and, and ambassadors. He also calls us stewards. In other words, that what, God, what we have is there because God gave it to us for a purpose. And it's God's money at the end of the day. So we, there's a discipline in duty. There's acts of obedience where the Spirit of God will talk to you. He'll prompt you. He'll put it in your heart to go ahead and give or be a blessing. There's areas where God himself will stretch you and stretch your faith to believe that he can and he will. There's areas where God will touch your life and touch others' life through your giving. It's exactly, I mean, I'm telling you, there's no better place where you will hear from God you will learn to hear from God concerning your finances, where to give, what to give, and how to give. And it's where you'll see God in action. For you give, it comes back three days later. You say, wow, that had to be the Lord. There's no better way to see God in action than this. I wrote this down. Everything in your hand is a seed. Everything in God's hand is a harvest. Think about that. You got that? Everything in your hand is a seed. Everything in God's hand is a harvest. How to get it into God's hand is give. Everybody shout give. Get your seed into God's hand by giving. It automatically becomes a harvest and that harvest will come back to you. Give according to your income lest God reduces your income according to your giving. Look at somebody say we will be in trouble. Proverbs 3.27, Withhold not good from them who it is due. When it's in your power, when it's in your power to hand it, to do it. Uh, in your power of your hand to do it. You got to get it. Listen to this. He said, Withhold not good from them that it's due. When it's in the power of your hand to do it. No one's if you have it. Oh, that's a sticky situation. Just no more than last week I was walking through Craig Avenue Shopping Centre, Rishmere, and, and, and I had a hundred pound in my pocket. Now I had it because I had something planned to do with it. It was there. It's not every day I walk away with a hundred pounds. There's no use trying to say we're going to mug him. No, 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 no. All you'd get is receipts or tickets or parking tickets or something. No, no. It's just I had a purpose. I had this sad one side. I was going to do something with it. I was in the shopping center. I was milling around. I was on my way back out and a man with dark glasses walked straight in front of me and, and I thought, I recognize this guy from somewhere. And the closer he got and he stood right in front of me, I thought, I know who that is now. He is a, he is a pastor that I've known. I haven't seen him in long, long time ago. Long time ago. I did stuff with him years ago, but, I, but you know, we just lost contact and here he was, large as life, right in front of me. 
in the middle of the shopping center. Well, we talked a few minutes, asked him where he was pastor now, why well, he was overwhelmed by telling me what God was doing. He was an older gentleman, you know, but still had that passion and zeal to serve God. We talked a few minutes. I said, I gotta go now, I got something to do. He said, I said, here's my card, call me, fix it. And so as I turned around, the Lord says, the money in your pocket, give it to him. I said, Lord, Lord, Lord. He said, yeah, that's because I had purpose. I had a purpose for the money. I had a purpose. He said, give it to him. Give it to him directly before he leaves. Give it to him. Give it to him now. I said, Lord. <laughs> he said, what did you read this morning? I said, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know, I know what I read. Withhold not the good from them that is true if it's in the power of your hand to do it. I said, he said, isn't it in the power of your hand? Don't you have it? I said, I do, I do, oh Lord. So I thought no more about it. I turned right and right. I said, I can make over here real quick. So I took it out and I put it. I said, that'll, that'll buy you and your wife something here away. Go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. And took off. I said, did I do good, Lord? And he said, you hesitated, son. You hesitated. <laughs> I said, but I did good. So he said, you did good, did good. Within 48 hours, three people had come into my life and each one of them had deposited a sizable amount of money which has averaged out to about three times the amount that I'd just given. And on the fourth, the fourth day after that, a man from another nation phoned me. He said, your ministry has been such a dynamic blessing to us and to our family. He said, I'm just listening to the recent stuff you're doing on YouTube. He said, I'd like to make a deposit to your ministry. He said, I want to give a hundred pounds every week to your ministry. I said, Here, here's the account. Keep her rolling in. Keep her rolling in. The minute I hung up, the Lord says, yeah, who did you give that to? I said, that man. He said, no, no, let's try it again. Who did you give that? I said, that ministry. He said, that's right. And because you sowed to a ministry, he said, now nah, I'm blessing your ministry. You give one, he says, I'm about to give to that every week. It's just because you did one. It's those ones there that kind of gets the ball rolling. Look at somebody say, if I have money, I'm about to give it. <laughs> oh, yes. Let me have finished with you. Have finished with you. If you want to be rich, give. If you want to be poor, hoard. If you want to be needy, grasp. Just say grasp it at everything and everybody. If you want to, and if you want to have abundance, then scatter. That means you sow here, you sow here. Here, 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 here. Oh, go there. Some of you would rather get the one big bulk and give it to somebody. Some of you would rather take the one and split it up into ten people and bless ten people. Whatever way, keep doing it, keep giving it. Oh, I wish somebody had taught me this years ago. Proverbs eleven twenty four. He that scattereth, there's he that scattereth, and yet he increases. You can't give it away fast enough. As you give, it's given back onto your press down, shaken together, and running over shall man give unto your bosom. Absolutely. He said, there's he that scattereth, and yet he increases. And there's he that withholdeth more than it's, more than it's fitting. And he says, he tendeth to poverty. Well, that's not what society's telling you. But that's what the Bible's telling you. The Bible says, hold on to it for a rainy day. If you're putting it aside for a rainy day, you're prophesying to yourself, you better look out because a rainy day is coming. I'm not setting aside for a rainy day because I'm not purposed nor expecting a rainy day. I'm expecting my God to meet all my needs according to his riches and glory so I can be a tremendous blessing on the way through. The liberal soul shall be made fat and he that watereth shall be watered himself. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him, but the blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth. So if you're one of these distributors and you're lending and you're helping, let me tell you the blessing of God God will come upon you and people will call you blessed. People will call you blessed. Look at somebody say, you don't know who I am. Covetousness is a master that is never satisfied no matter what we have. There's always one more thing we want. Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 10 and the new, in the new, uh, the NI, the Northern Ireland version, in the <laughs> New International Version, the NIV, it puts it this way, Ecclesiastes 5 and 10. NIV version says, Whosoever loves money never has enough. Ecclesiastes 5, 13 in the NIV says, I have seen grievous evil under the sun. What a way to put this. I've seen a grievous evil under the sun. Wealth hoarded to the harm of its owner. Wealth hoarded to the harm of its owner. So he said he had it. And instead of that becoming a major blessing, 
it became a curse. It put barriers around him, fears about not having enough, always wanting him more, made him work harder. It just put barriers in his life when all the time he had an opportunity and opening to become a major blessing. And that that he had would have accumulated without a shadow of a doubt. Three stories I, I, I was involved in quite recently with a missionary, wonderful, wonderful man. He's in his 90s now, but he's still preaching, still travels. He's really a missionary to Mexico. Tremendous, tremendous man. We told three stories. One, he had this trainee, a young guy that he had brought out of Bible school with him. He's always worked in Mexico. Mexico is a very, very dangerous country. It's got drugs, barons, drugs, lords. A very poor country in most of the mountain regions. So the bandits still live up in there. They'll, they'll just take everything of anybody and leave you for dead. And he was going into one of these areas. He had a young helper with him who was fresh out of Bible school. He was ready to win the world. And he was driving up in this old rack of a car, going up into the, where the banditos were, where, the, where the, the, the Mexican bandits were. And he's getting up into that border area and it started to get dark. And in conversation with the young man, he says, do you tithe? The young man said, well, he said, I like to give people and I like to help people. And the, the guy says, no, he says, that's not the question. He says, do you tithe? And the young guy kept heading the question, and now we're further into bandit territory, really dangerous territory. It's dark right now. And so the missionary turned around to the young help. He says, I need to ask you one more time. Do you tithe? And the young man turned around. He says, no, sir, I don't. The missionary slammed on the brakes, and he says, get out of the car. <laughs> And the young man got out of the car and says, you can't leave me here. It's dark. I'm in the middle of bandit country. He reached over and he says, listen to me, son. He said, them bandits, they rob men. But he said, you have robbed God. <laughs> he said, you, are, you have robbed God. And as far as I'm concerned, they're not a danger to me, but you are because you have robbed God. And he says, close the door. And so the young guy goes, he says, I'll tithe, I'll tithe. He said, then get back into the car again. He said, I wasn't going to leave him, but I left him a very valuable lesson right there and there. He said, I've seen this over the years. This is what he said, tremendous man. He said, and I taught, every, taught in the poorest, poorest countries in India how God, men ought, ought to tithe and give God so that God could flourish them and keep them. And he said, this one landowner came to many, many years ago and said, I've lands, three pots of land. It's not selling, but if you'll come down to the land, pray over it. If you get it sealed, I promise I'll tithe. And he said, the man came down, he with his mission went down, he prayed over the land. He said, the land sold in a very short period of time. And, they, and, and, and he came back on the day the land, the money was being handed over and then there was no bank documents which just handed, pesos, the paper pesos was handed over. And he says, he said the man went and he had a handful, fistful of money, you know. And uh, the guy was there, he says, you promised when this would sell. He said, you'd tithe. He said, ah, oh, this is too much, too much to give into a church. He says, here you are. He'd give a little tip. <laughs> And he got a hank and he rolled, rolled the rest up in his hanky and he put it in his pocket. And the guy says, well, he says, you just robbed God. You just robbed God. He says, there's always an interest to pay when you rob God. So, so he says, he walked off and he says, there's a storm coming. The guy had to walk home with his pace that was in his pocket. Well, whatever happened, the fine dust was blown around, got over his nostrils, made him sneeze. And in his moment of sneezing, he reached for his hanky. <laughs> With the pesos was in it, pulled it out real quick to wipe his nose, and the money took off in the storm. All the pesos went fly by, went fly me right there, took off. He says he never got what, not one peso out of it. They disappeared in the moonlight. Disappeared. <laughs> disappeared in the real life. He said, there's another type of guy. He said, this guy was kind of a wealthy man. He was a real hoarder. He said, he came to Jesus, but he wouldn't open up his heart to give him. And he said, the guy said, if you tithe, God will take care of it. He said, I will not. He says, I, 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 I've taken care of people. I have not, I'm not giving them to God. He said, well, be it on to you. And he said, that night he went home and enlarged some money. He, in them places, they don't work on banks either because banks get robbed all the time. He took it home and put it under the mattress. He lived in one of these villas two stories up. He went upstairs to his bed, took the money, put the money under the mattress, then went down on his business. His grandson, who was staying overnight, came in, jumping on the mattress, looked under the mattress, found the money, looked out the window, saw all the people going, and they were having the, the fiestas, you know, when they hit the big thing, and it flows down with, with paper. He said, I can help you too. Got the money from under the mattress, <laughs> took it over the window, and threw the whole stuff out the window. We had a tremendous blessing to the people, but the guy lost his money. Look at somebody say, it pays to give God his cut. <laughs> I know one guy said, but Joe, it, it hurts. It really hurts to give. I know, but I told him one time, just keep giving till the hurt goes away. Just keep giving until the pain stops. One of these days it was. Jesus Christ, our example, our master, our savior, our Lord, our supplier, our source. He, we watch him in his life. Everywhere he went, he met the needs of people. Wherever he went and wherever he would go and whatever opportunity, he would bless the people right, left, and center. So you and 
I are meant to be the same as we walk through this life. We're meant to be looking for opportunities where we can put our hand in our pocket or we can make a promise there. I'll come back later. I'll, I'll do this for you. We've got to be people of our word. We've got to be people of our word and learn how to make a blessing. Say, I don't have it on me right now, but I'll be back in 24 hours. Let me, let me give you this. Let me bless. Learn how to tip the waitresses. Learn how to say nice things to people. Let me tell you, it doesn't take very much. Just a little, just a little will make a tremendous difference in somebody's day somewhere. You don't have to be hunting it out by the hundreds unless you have it. But let me tell you something, just, just a little courteous nod, a smile, something, appreciation, an encouragement to someone, or the tip, or the payment, or someone. If you learn to do that, I tell you, your world will become enriched. You'll begin to smile. You'll begin to look for people that, you begin to look for opportunities out there. You need to practice giving five pounds and ten pounds and twenty pounds to people at the drop of a hat till it doesn't hurt you anymore, till you're trusting God. And the more you give, the more is given back to you press down, shaking together, running over. Give to the single moms. Give to the widows. Give to the orphans. Give to the stranger that comes through the door. You, you're not hardly going to church in Northern Ireland where a stranger comes in and goes out with more money than he came in with. But what if we were a church that would do that? For years I've done that. Find out who traveled for the first time a long distance and made sure they had the money to get home on a train or the fuel or, or buy them a burger or something. God gives you extra. When you have set a purpose in your mind to do it, God will get it to you and then you'll find that money becomes a tool and a tremendous thing when, you, when you're traveling when you're on about learn how to do it learn how to be a blessing everywhere you go if you've got no money hey share your food you got, you got none of that then share your time but begin to share your life scatter your life abroad with people and watch how it happens somebody said one time he said well I'll just wait when my boat comes in I'll be a big blessing no no, you need to get into a rowing boat and row out towards the boat while you're waiting on it coming in go out there and meet it with your giving <clears throat> winning a lottery is a fantasy Given as a discipline. We don't need abundance to get start. You just need a willing heart. When that woman that day stood where Jesus was standing a little way away, but he was watching in the treasury of the temple. And the Bible says all she had in her purse was two mates. Nothing really. I've seen two mates and they're no size. They wouldn't buy you anything nowadays. But back then they wouldn't buy you much either. And she took the last two coins in her purse and she tossed them into the, into the offering box and Jesus seen it. He said something in the King James as it uses a word that I went and looked it up just this morning before I come here. And he said that, that uh, uh, she could have turned around and said, well wait till my boat comes in then I'll bless the house. But she didn't. She did it right there out of her need. The, the King James James's version says she gave it out of her penury. And so I looked at where else? I said, what, what is that word? So I looked it up and it means extreme poverty. So she didn't wait until she had sufficient to do it. She started where she had. And all she had was the last two, two sondimes, the last two slotte, the last two pesos, the last two euros. All she had was the last two and she took it out and threw it in. It's gone now. It's in there. It's not coming. It's gone. And Jesus made a remark. He said, you see all the rich man's gold that went in? He said, that doesn't top what she just did. And they looked and said, are you crazy? It's two, two mates. Two mates. Wouldn't even buy a bungee with two mates. Couldn't feed a mouse. With, I know he said, no, no. He said, you get this wrong, guys. This is, this is how God sees. He counts quality before he counts quantity. Now, he does count quantity, but he counts quality first. And she, what he was saying is, she's a quality giver. God is looking at the quality of your giving. He's looking at the way you do it. See, we're, we're heaven bound. I mean, we're just pillars. We're just passing through. We're not here forever. We're just, we're just making the best as we go through. But right now, we can make heavenly deposits on our way through this life. Every time we tithe, every time we pray, every time we give love offerings, we're making a heavenly deposit. And by, Jesus talked in Matthew 6 about making heavenly deposits. He says, don't, don't lay yourself up treasures on earth where there's, where there's rust and corruptions and, and thieves that break through. He says, lay up your treasure in heaven where nobody gets through to it, where it's safe and sound and where it's yours for where your treasure is, there your heart shall be also. Start with what you have. Start where you are. The smallest act of obedience is better than the best of intentions. Did you get that? The smallest act of obedience is better than the best of intentions. There's no victories at bargain prices. Everybody wants a bargain, but there's really no major victories with bargain prices. In 1 Kings 17, verse 13 and verse 15, again out of the NIV, it says, And Elisha said to her, do you remember they were in a famine? 
God sent him down and said, I've somebody down there will keep you. When they got that, this woman, she, has, she was down to the last. She had absolutely nothing. And she, she's waiting on God doing something for her. Well, God's about to do something for her. And God gave her a principle. Here's what she said. The guy came to her. Now, she had nothing. Do you remember? She had a little bit of oil and a little bit of, 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 of flour. She was going to make a, a, a couple of cakes for her and her boy. That was it. Then they're going to die. Do you remember reading that? She was out there getting the fire away just to do it. This is her last meal. And Elijah said unto her, he said, this is God's man, came down and said, don't be afraid. Go home and do what I have said unto you. But first make me a small loaf of bread. Make it for me uh, from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and for your son. Did you get a hold of the principle? Give it to me first and then go home and whatever's left and make it for you and your boy. For the Lord, the God of Israel says this, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jar of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain. And she did, she went away and did as Elijah told her and there was food every day for Elijah, for the woman and her family. Just on one given, on one given, she sat, so set herself up that and everybody else was in famine, she wasn't. On one given, just on one given, you can do it. There's unending supply that you can tap into it. You don't tap into it, everyone, but one of those givens is what you need. One of those givens will be a door opening that you never thought that will be perpetual. I remember, I told you before, so I'm not going to tell you the story again, but I give a watch that was very valuable to me. I gave that watch to, to, to a, a guy who really had a, a, a Mickey Mouse watch on because that's the best he could afford in his country. And I took mine off and I gave it to him. Laura took hers off and gave it to the pastor's wife. Let me tell you, that triggered an avalanche of watches ever since. Everywhere I go, people buy me presents and I can tell them before it opened, it's another watch. I have a collection of watches. I give watches away. And one time I went back to the Lord and I said, enough is enough. I get the point. I get the point. I don't need another watch. I got three good watches at the minute that I choose. Whatever suit them wearing, I'm making the watch. That's awful. That's awful. Uh, what's that word for you? Vain of you. No, I got three watches. I don't know what else to do. Well, we'll give them. I've given everything else away and I will give it shortly. Are you with me? Do I learn there's some given that's perpetual. It never stops. It keeps coming. You only do it once and you're in. There's other things that God wants you to be a blessing till, but he proved it right there and then. But you've got to refuse the fear. The first thing when God says give, you say, there's not a chance. You've got to refuse the fear that says you'll go without if you give. When you say, I'll give, well, what am I going to do now? Well, trust God. God says, I'll give it back unto your press down, shaking together, running over, shall man give unto your bosom. So refuse the fear. And then put God first. Put God first before yourself. Put God's bed first and then step out in faith and obedience whatever he's asked you to do. Why would God ask a poor, starving widow woman to give the last before she gave herself? Why did he do that? Is God one of these, these selfish gods that just wants, just going to see you hurt? No, no. He's trying to get her into a position where he can help her. And he can't get into a place to help her till she's got some faith operation. So he sent a principal to her and said, I know you're starving and I know you've got hardly any left, but you've got enough left to get this thing going. So give me first. Don't give me it all. Don't give me it. I don't want it all. You leave enough, enough for, for a ham sandwich down there. But he said, give me this. Give me the first portion of this. I will take care of the rest. And it triggered an avalanche of blessing there are. It's the same reason God sends you the missionary letters in. He sends you then from uh, uh, open door ministries. That's the reason them envelopes is coming through your door. Not because somebody sent your meal slot off. It's because God needs you to give. Look at somebody say, he's talking to you this morning. God needs you to give because as soon as you give, he can start operating through you. You have bound the hands that's got the mood, that's got the food. You could miss a tremendous opportunity when God wants a, a, a perpetual supply coming, but you refuse to give and you've just caught that up. It could be another 10 years before that comes back your way. You can't afford to miss this. This is why you've got to practice, practice, keep doing it. Let me tell you, that's the reason that he does it. So he's opening you up. And he never asked her to go and feed the whole village. He just asked her to do one person. Give that to this person. It's all he asked her to do. But it caused a perpetual motion there afterwards. <clears throat> God multiplies what we give, not what we hold. Did you get that? God multiplies what we give, not what we hold. As long as you're holding it, it ain't multiplying. It's not. In fact, the government's got to look at it and they're going to find another way to tax you on it. But God says, as soon as you give it, son, 
I'm going to do it. In the Bible school that I taught in back there, they're tremendous. They teach the kids to give. I don't think Bible schools do this, but that one does. They teach them to give. They'll teach them to pay, help pay each other's books. They'll teach them, you know, the way if you're, if you're in a dorm with other girls and they say, I like your blouse, they teach them, give the girl your blouse and help each other just in the small matters. It'll teach you when you go to the mission fields, you're going to have to learn to trust God then, so trust God now. And this one lady, she was actually from Japan. She, she was down to her last and she needed 50 pounds to make up the, the session that she needed to go through and she was down to her last. And, and they bring uh, a, a, a mission people in to tell about how to give and tell them how to do these things to show how God works. It. And all she has is one pound. And she said, she says, God, I'll have this one. God says, that's enough. That'll do it. That'll do it. Here's what I want you to do. And she gave, she gave one pound to, to the person, whoever God told her. She just said, that's all I have. Hey, there you go. Well, it was one dollar, but in our money, one pound. She'd give it to them on the way by. And she said that morning, she was a part-time job for to, just to keep up. She went in, and she says her boss was standing. And her boss is usually a grumpy individual, standing, looking and looking, look at her. And she walked in, and so the young girl says, are you, are you all right? And she says, no. She says, no, I'm not. She said, did, did I do something wrong? Did I not clean? She says, no, 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 no. She says, I've never heard this, and I can't understand this. She says, but, but I just believe I'm supposed to give you 50 pounds. So she says, here you are, take it and get out of my road. <laughs> <laughs> this was just one pound. Look at somebody say, I'll do that. I can do that. I can do that. See, God, what is God asking you to do? Prosperity is not measured by what you have. See, the world looks at what you have. That's your prosperity. The rich list. No, God's prosperity. Prosperity is not measured in what you have, but it's by what you give. It's what you give. Uh, and, and, and listen to what I wrote down for me. You don't even have to accept it, but this is for me. If you want God to do something for you that he's never done before, then you'll have to do something for God that you have never done before. Will I say that again? If you want God to do something for you that he's never done before, then you'll have to do something for God that you have never done before. Are you thinking it through? Here's another thing. Give without remembering, but receive without forgetting. So whenever you, whenever you give, just walk away from it and say, it's done. Thank you, thank you. Because that'll haunt you. I don't know what, what amount of money you've ever given, but, but if you're on a low um, um, uh, income and you suddenly give 100, you'll not forget that you just give 100. If, if you're on, on, a, on a little bit more and you give 500, you guarantee you, you'll not forget the day you give 500. If you give an offer of 1,000 pounds, you turn around and say, I, 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 I've, I've purposed some hard, I'm going to give 5,000, but it'll take me three months to save it. I'm going to do that and I'm going to do it now. The day you hand that over, you'll not walk away saying, Pfft. Sure, that was nothing. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. But here's the script. Here's principles. Give without remembering. Let it go. Put your seat in and walk away from it. Here's the next bit then. Receive without forgetting. Whenever you've got it, remember to thank the person. Remember to thank the Lord. And your thankfulness will cause major, major returns. I had written down, I don't know where we are in time right now. How are we doing for times? Anybody looking at the clock? Can I have a few more minutes with this? I'm doing good. I'm blessing myself. I'm about to empty my bank account in about 10 seconds of blue bass. But I had round in the book of Acts, and I don't have time to read it right now. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 44, the Bible says when the move of God started, they had all things common. Rich and poor is all in there together. They had all things common. And they said in verse, at verse 44, it says, they believed together. They had all things in common. So they felt for each other. They, 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 they uh, believed for each other. For the next verse says, And they sold their possessions and the good, and they parted them to every man as every man had a need. I'm not asking you to go and sell everything and as God's asked you to tell you, but I'm trying to tell you a principle. The minute the move of God started, the next thing happened, they started to help people. They helped him. They found out hey, they had a phone bill, couldn't be paid. They paid the phone bill. They paid somebody's mortgage. They paid somebody's car. They began to do it. That's in a move of God. People here is praying, oh God, send us revival. And they won't put 10 pounds on an offering plate. It's not going to happen. One of the first things that happened is revival that you'll fall in love with people. You'll lose your love for money and you'll want to help him. You'll want to help her. You'll want to help it. And the more you give, it's Given back onto you, press down, checking together, running over. So your storehouse building and you're operating. Absolutely. Look at somebody say, absolutely. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. I'm talking fast now because I'm trying to get through this. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. He said, I'll show you all things and how you ought to labor, how you ought then to support the weak. Support the, he's talking about people in church. Support the weak. Help people in the house of God. Come in on Sunday morning and say, God, who do I need to help today? 
Carry a little bit extra with you. Forget about the extra bar of chocolate last week. Buy it and put it in the fridge and give it to somebody on Sunday. You ought to support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said it's a greater blessing. A greater blessing to give than it is to receive. King David, after building the temple, according to 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 3, out of the Amplified Version says, he says, King David says, After my devotions to the temple of my God, I give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God over and above everything that I have provided for the holy temple. Wow. Everybody shout, over and above. He said, I've given and I've given and I've given over and above. You will never lack if you learn to give over above. Here's another one-liner. Give not from the top of your purse, but from the bottom of your heart. Did you get that one? Don't give from the top of your purse. Hey, that'll do you. No, give from the bottom of your heart. Uh, and and uh, we just, I'm moving, I've actually a whole bunch of stuff and I'm moving on through it here. The woman with the alabaster box, that's precious, precious perfume. She didn't even open the seal. She just broke the whole thing out over the top of Jesus till he was saturated on it. People complained and people, people said that money should be given to the poor. You know the way people go on. Look at somebody say, well, no, well, no, well, no. It's none of their business because it wasn't theirs to give. It was hers to give. And she broke it out over the Savior. And when she did it, let me tell you, her story has been told down through the years, down through the decades and down through the centuries. Her story of how she blessed and how she gave. If she had left to people, she'd have given nothing. She would have given nothing. Uh, wait, let me tell you, not a one-liner. When you give because you can't help it, you'll receive because you can't stop it. You've got to keep giving until you get to this place. You can't help yourself. I've just got to do it. See, I had a hundred pound of a pocket that assigned it to something, but it never got to the assignment. Never got to the assignment. It went. Because God says give it. That's not the first time. One time I, you know, I had a desperation one time to have a boat. I wanted a boat. I didn't want an ocean liner. I didn't want a cabin cruiser. I wanted a boat. Just an ordinary thing with a little bit of a cabin over, with an engine in the back. So I started to save my money. Oh, save my money, save my money, save my money. Save my money. And, had to, had to, and one day, one day, the last note went into the pile. I said to the Lord, I have it. I have it. I have my money. You know, it doesn't take a whole bunch of money to buy, buy a small boat. I said, I have it, I have it, I have it, I have it, Lord. Go home now, look, go find me a boat now. It fits my price. It fits my size. <laughs> Never did get the boat because the Lord said, well, on a, just a, several days later, you know the money you've set aside? I said, no, I don't. <laughs> no money here. I don't have any money set aside. He said, you know the money you've set aside? I said, all right, the money I've set aside. He says, there's people in your congregation who, who have not had a holiday in years. I said, So? <laughs> they have not had a holiday. He said, you see that money? I knew where we were going with us straight away. I just knew, bye-bye sailing boat. Bye-bye boat. Hollow holiday for somebody else. He says, there's enough in that there for two holidays. That's two different people that you could bless. And their life would be, would be enriched. So I said, okay. Okay. <laughs> if you learn how to give, God will bless you beyond your wildest expectation. I'll say it again. If you give because you can't help it, then you'll receive because you can't stop it. The enemy will not be able to stop it. You can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. I'm almost there now. I'm almost there. Everybody shout, he's almost there. I tell you, it's been a tremendous series since I started to preach this and some of the stuff I've lived by. I know, but when you put it all together, I'm learning myself all over again. I was, I just tickled when I put this together. I said, man, that's class. I've got to preach this to myself. If nobody shows up, I'll just preach it to myself and then I'll receive an offer and then I'll give. Absolutely. David gives sacrificially. In First Chronicle chapter 21 and verse 24, out of the Amplified, it says, but King David said to Ornan, he says, I will... The case was he needed to make an offering unto God. And he came to his best friend. His best friend owned a lot of stuff. And the best friend said, What did I tell you, David? You don't have to pay me anything. I'm your buddy. I owe you. Here, look, take all this. Here's the deeds. You buy that. There's that piece of land. You want to build an altar here? I'll send the carpenters down to do it. Here's what David said. He says, And the king said unto Orna, No, I will certainly pay the full price, for I will not take what is yours for the Lord, nor offer a burnt offering which costs me nothing. If it's not if it's not registered in here, if your giving's not touching in here, it's not registered in heaven. 
It's the giving that you're doing that makes you go, uh-huh. Then it makes heaven go, mm-hmm. <laughs> them two mates, I was thinking about this this morning, them two mates that that widow walked in, you know, we don't even know her name. We don't know where she lived. We don't even know what she done there afterwards. We don't know. But we know something that tickled the life out of Jesus. When he stopped and looked over, he says, boys, where do you see this? Where do you see this? See that woman up there? Had to stop and had to give a whole explanation about two, two, two mates. Wow. Them two little given happened to be what we call sacrificial given because it's all she had. And that got Jesus Christ's attention. Jesus Christ gives sacrificially on the cross. He gave it all. His heavenly Father gave it all because he had the sign and say, okay, go. He gave everything. The darling of heaven, as the, as the, as the song says. He gave heaven's best and said, go on their behalf. He made the ultimate sacrifice of his life. And every time, every time person bows their head and said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Hey, that was free for you to say, come. But that cost him everything for you to be accepted. Sacrificial giving. I'm almost there now. Three types of giving, really. There's this one called spontaneous giving, where, hey, it's offering time. Here we go. Throw one in. Or, or, or you happen to have a little surplus on you, and somebody comes along and says, you know, I just need this, and you turn, hey, 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 that, that. It's just spontaneous, and it didn't really cost you anything. You'll get, you'll get, you'll get through. As long as your mother's alive, you can borrow a tenner the next week. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank God for mothers, you can borrow a tenner off during the next week. But as, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like most people can get through. But it's the giving that puts you right on an edge. Spontaneous giving, everybody does it, and it, that's, it'll give back on you, press down, shake, and you get it running over. The one that really gets going is the one with purpose and intention behind it, and it's usually sacrificial. It's the one you defy God, I'm going to do that. I can't do that right now because I don't have enough money to do it, but I'm going to do that. And you don't have to wait until there's a building fund. In fact, most of the stuff I'm talking is not even to do inside the house of God. I know the TV evangelists will never tell you that. They say, you give to this ministry, give to this ministry. Go ahead and give to that ministry. A lot of it's wasting time and wasting life. You need to find the response from God and say, where am I going to bless? Who's in desperate need? What am I going to do? And let God lead you. You'll find your life will blossom. The blessing of God will be upon you. You don't have to be a millionaire to do it now. But if you keep doing it, you'll end up in millionaire status. You can't give it away quick enough. There's people, God will send people on your life with needs. He didn't send them to there. He sent them to you because he's trying to get you to see this. This is your opportunity now to come to a different level. Bless them. Not small. Do what you, some of that, some of that's just spontaneous. Here, let me help you out now. Here, let me buy. I, 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 I'm quick to buy dinners and pick to buy coffees and stuff like that. There. But I've done that. And you know, everywhere I go, sometimes I go to America. When we're in America, we never pay for food. And we go to dine in the best. But I've tell you, I've sown it in this nation over the years. Very quick to pay for somebody's stuff. Very quick to do it. But I know it's sowing for future things. And I'm not lacking. You can tell. <laughs> you can tell there's no lack. Look at somebody say, you're looking good, Joe. You're looking good. <clears throat> Spontaneous. The better one than that is the purposed one where you purpose in your heart, I'm going to do it. Now you've got to make big plans to give big time. Periodically in the church, we do give targets. Haven't given for a long time. No intention to give any for a while yet. But if we, if we were going to buy a building or something, there would be a project. But there, I, I do bring missionaries in and I have plans to bring other missionaries in. That's an opportunity to bless somebody outside of yourself. Opportunity to say, well, they have got 17 different sponsors. Well, you could be the 18th. God, God puts people in front of your life and expects you to do something. He'll do it. He'll find it. You'll get touched on the inside. And when you do it, listen, expect to receive. Don't just keep giving. Expect to receive. You've got to get the both flowing and the both going. You've never met a farmer who went out and spent sweat off his brow, day and night, plowing a field, then going sowing the seeds, and then saying, I'm away off to Africa. I'll be back in 10 years. Never. You've never found a farmer who sowed and didn't expect to reap. He's always sown because of the harvest and you've got to sow because of the harvest. As you give, it's given back onto your press down, shaking the other, run it over. Man will give onto your bosom. The more you get, start launch out again. Get it into multiple places. He that scattereth will increase. 
Are you with me? The, he that watereth will be watered himself. There's nothing better. I know it's good when somebody comes and says, there's a wee blessing. Fantastic. But what triggers that is when you have first of all given behind the scenes. You'll walk away saying, well, I did it, I done it, I have done it. Whatever proper English is there, they have done it to do it. Whatever that grammar is, when you have done it, everybody should have done it. When you have done it, you walk away and then it starts coming back. You will realize I triggered that because I did this. Have you got me? Yeah. Expect to receive. Now, this is the very, very last. So don't expect to harvest until you have sown the seeds. You got that? Sounds simple. A lot of people always go, Oh, God, you got to give me this. God doesn't have to give you anything. One time he did it to me. I kind of close. But one time I went and I said, God, I need this. And he says, Well, let's look at your account. <laughs> I said, please don't do that. Please don't do that. I said, I'll be back in the morning. Hold on. And I had to go and get some money. And I had to go and give it. And then come back and said, now you can look at my kind. You've got to have something in there. Look at somebody say, you've got to have something in there. You can't reap before you sow. You cannot reap before you sow. You've got to sow it. <clears throat> as soon as the seed leaves your hand, the harvest begins. Lastly, it may leave your hand, but it never leaves your life. Did you get that one? It will leave your hand, but it never leaves your life because it's in your heavenly account. And as long as now you're doing what's right with God's money, blessing and being a blessing, he will launch it down through you and you can accumulate real quick. You can go after it. There's some of them things God will put in your heart to be a major blessing and some of the finances coming through, you'll have to save that up for this operation here. But I remember time out of number, there's things I needed to do and needed to say. And I, I remember saying, well, I can't, I can't give any more out of what I'm doing. We've got problems enough here. And I remember saying, God, I need to do this. So could, should, should, could we do this on a separate from where I'm living here? Could, we, could you send it in separate from what we're doing here? It was just after that, the extra money started to come in. And our ninety. the extra money wasn't for here. It was for the project. Get a project. Get somebody want to bless. Get somebody want to pay for their holidays. Get somebody want to help them with their car payment. Because the first time you do it, I tell you, you'll walk away chuckling to yourself. You'll do it just outside of where you normally are. Go for it. Go for it. You have it accumulated somewhere. Get it out. Nest egg time. Oh, I wish we had a building project. I'd be, I'd be hunting you now for your, for your nest egg. No, 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 no. I, I just, I just, I just, I'm not worried about all that stuff. I'm trying to get you to, and I wish somebody had taught me this when I first got born again. They didn't. But I'm trying to help you now. There's another level that you're at right now. Have you been given, given big time? You give that it shocked you. Well, then get ready for a harvest that will shock you. And when it comes back in, don't sell Lord, just say, we're on our winner now and go again. Just keep on going again. Are we ready? Now we're going to put the offering baskets around this morning. I know I usually don't do that. I usually do the offering. Then I do. But I see, that's the sense in doing that. I, if I was praying for healing tonight, when we're going to teach in healing, we're going to pray for healing. This morning we're doing our finances. God's talking to you. Every time an oper- the poor, the, whatever comes on you, God's talking to you. Learn to distinguish what God's saying. I know you, somebody said, said, well, I want to give 500, and then there's this other first that says, that's too much, just give 20. Always give the first thought. Look at somebody say, I've got to give the first thought. <laughs> Nobody ever does the argue. Well, I give half of that then. Quit arguing. Go the whole hog. What can you lose? Nothing. You'll gain everything. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Are you ready to give this morning? As every man has purposed in his heart. Now, if you're going to give grumpy, if you're going to give with an old grump on your face, keep your money. Keep your money. If you're going to go out through that door and say, well, I wish I hadn't given it at all. Hey, let me, let me help you. You'll sleep better at night. Put it back in your pocket. It'll do you no good. Keep it, okay? But if you can give cheerfully, if you can smile, if you can give that, it registers. Yeah, I just did that. I did that. What do you hear what I did? Woo! Yes, yes, yes. See, Laura and I, when Laura and I give, goes to give substantially. <coughs> and we do. We've done this from the day now we get born again. Now, our substantial amount probably doesn't register in everybody else's mind, but yours is big. And there's times we just give. There's times we give big. And I always say to Laura, if I'm going to end a place or be in a place, I'll walk over there and say, you, you see the person down there? I think we ought to give them. I think we do this. And so I'll, sometimes she'll come and say to me, you know, I was thinking we need to give this. We need to give this. And sometimes, it's sometimes like the two of us go to say it together. Have you ever done it? You can say, hey, I was thinking, and I was thinking the same. And it's tremendous because you know, you know God's in the thing. And then you, 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 you do it together. If you don't have it together to do it with, just do it as you purpose in your heart. Purpose in your heart. Maybe you, have a, maybe you have a designated goal that you needed. We'll give for that. 
Maybe God has a goal. Give towards his goal. Whatever way it is, just purpose in your heart. Don't give for the sake of giving. Give for the purpose in your heart and watch what God does, okay? Are you with me now? Make this your lifestyle. Make it your lifestyle. And then everywhere you go, no matter where you go, no matter what church you're in, do it, do it. And not only church. This is not a church thing. If this was just a church thing, then, then I would be a hypocrite telling you this stuff. This is a way of life. Be this when you're in the shopping center. You never know who you meet. You never know who you meet. You never know who's in desperation. And you're the only real believer that they're going to meet all day. And you have it within your power to do it. Say, I want to help you. I, I, I love you. I don't have it right now, but look, meet me tomorrow here. Whatever way you need to do it, go after this. Make us a purpose. This is a battle. You've got to beat this other demonic thing that says, you know, you hoard it all, give it. I would give them nothing. Well, stop that. I'm going to put my money away for a rainy day. You're only calling it in. Stop it. Break this. Fight. Fight for liberty in your finances. Fight for the right to give as you want to give. Fight for the right for the harvest to come back for you and, 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 and watch it happen. Are you ready? Father, I thank you for the word. I'm a happy, I preach myself happy this morning. I've been giving away my money. Can't hardly believe that, but I believe it right now. So we thank you for the opportunity to give, to give, to give. You talk to us and we're going to give us our tithe so as the, the, the Re devourer is rebuked and the opportunities of heaven is coming our way. We, we're going to have opportunities this day to see, to be a blessing, to help people. Is that the, roll them opportunities by us, Father, because it's greater. Um, it's a time that when we can increase and increase and increase. We thank you now. We thank you now for this offering this morning in Jesus' name. Amen? Okay. When you do it this way, you cannot be robbed. You cannot be robbed. You know the way those people who say, hey, lend me 500 and I'll pay you back and then they never do. You everybody know them people? You know them people? Well, let me say, what's the chances of you getting that back? Slim and far between. Here's what I learned a long time ago. Instead of, oh, them people never pay. We well, you know what you need to do? Because you're not getting it back anyway. It's lost. What you do is get in the prayer room and say, Father, I bless that back to them. They don't have to pay me that. I give it to them. You know what you have just sowed? A seed. A sizable seed. It wasn't in your hand. It wasn't coming your hand away. But it's yours to do. You can either hold on to that and punish yourself about never getting it back and look down on him because he never given it back to you. Or you can walk away smiling and say, man, I just made a sizable offer in there. And give it to them. Give it to them. When it's in, then you have a sizable harvest coming back to you. As believers, you can't be robbed. You can only receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo, I am happy now. All right, did we do the offering? Let's everybody stand our feet. Father, we thank you. We're walking into a harvest field now. We are blessed beyond, beyond our imagination. Good things is happening to us. There's trigger blessings. There's sacrificial blessings. There's spontaneous giving this morning. Some people's given all. Some people's given a few. What, whatever. It is now registered in the bank of heaven. Let the good times roll. Thank you, my Father, for taking care of us, watching over us. In Jesus' name, amen. See you at 6.30 tonight. Look at three people and say, I want to buy you coffee. <laughs> then argue with them and say, no, I'm paying. And then fall out with them because you've got to pay. <laughs> <laughs>